listening to Race Base Drive and Five. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Race Face Drive in Five. I'm Tom Baker, and joining me on this Drive in Five episode is Jesse Love, the California kid, and now, of course, living over here on the East Coast in the greater Charlotte, North Carolina area, and uh, racing really all over the country. And um, I think we can basically prove that in this Drive in Five here, because, Jesse, you've... Uh, you run about three races since the last time we had you on, and um, one of them was in Phoenix, and one of them was in Georgia, and the other one was right here in uh, Mooresville, North Carolina. So uh, you do a fair amount of traveling. Let's back up and start with uh, the race at Phoenix in the ARCA car. Talk a little bit about that weekend. Um, again, two-time defending ARCA West champion, but uh, running uh, more of the bigger uh, races this year. So talk about uh, Phoenix for you. Yeah, we unloaded off the truck uh, pretty decent. We were third in practice, um, third or fourth. And it was definitely a little bit of, of getting used to just with um, my first time being there in a, in a Venerini car. It was a lot different than what I'd been running there the times before. Um, but I was really happy with our long run speed. Uh, and, and then practice was qualifying. So, on our mock run, we qualified third, um, had some lap traffic. So our first lap was our, was our best lap there. So, um, obviously didn't need to get blocked by a lap car. It was, it was a pretty bad deal, but I yeah. uh, still had a pretty decent qualifying run out of it. Um, probably could have qualified second without that traffic. And, um, you know, I'd say that in the race, we were pretty good. Uh, we started third, obviously. And, um, we weren't quite as good in the beginning to to challenge for the lead, and um, I think we tightened it up too much at the halfway break and kind of got behind the eight ball uh, in the beginning of the run when it was pretty tight. But there were times where I'm not sure why, maybe just working my fans or uh, making a lot of – or and the track was getting cooler too, which kind of helped us a little bit free us up as the sun went down. But we were able to make a charge back to the front. I think we were, we were restarting third again with um, on the green-white checker. And I think we were fourth or fifth before that and had a good couple of restarts. Obviously, green, white checker, like I said, we got up to third. And then um, we went in the turn one on the white flag in second. And uh, the 18, you know, just drove down there and put us all the way almost in the fence and, and put us, you know, in the last groove of the of the PJ1, uh, which was really slick at that time because nobody worked it in um, just because the bottom was a faster way around. So um, we ended up coming out of that corner in six after getting in there in second. So it was, you know, a pretty um, aggressive deal and um, definitely something I won't forget. But, um, you know, we'll obviously keep that in mind um, as we go for the rest of the year. And I think that if anything had gone to plan, we probably could have qualified somewhere or I mean, finished somewhere in, in the top three or top two range. I wasn't quite sure if we were going to be able to go fast enough to um cast the 17 to get the win um but we were probably going to come out second at the at the worst of it so um definitely a little bit of some stuff to learn but it was my first time working with uh shane rush and, and that first time in the in the 20 car this year and uh to put ourselves in a position to win is, is sometimes all you can really ask for so uh we just got to keep putting ourselves in in those positions for the next you know 16 or 15 races and and, and we'll get some wins yeah, that's uh, exactly. You got to be in it to win it. So uh, you definitely were in it. And as you said, um, kind of got taken out of it uh, through something that it was of not your doing. Um, we move along to Crisp Motorsports Park in the Atlanta, Georgia area, greater Atlanta, Georgia area, I guess, or just outside Atlanta. And um, this I love this track, first of all, and uh, that puts you back in the super late model, which I know you love to drive, how did that weekend go for you? Yeah, Chris was good. We unloaded off the truck uh, really good in practice. Uh, we were fastest in, in, in practice. I think it was the day before uh, the race. There was that open practice session deal. And um, it was my first lap on the track, and, and we were fast out of the gate. Me and Bubba uh, seemed to be the two best cars. I felt like, um, you know, my car wasn't driving quite how I wanted it to, but. We had really good speed, and it seemed like we had a ton of drive. So 
we worked on some stuff to try to make it better. Um, nothing was quite working our way, but we were still really fast and making good lap time. And I felt like when the sun was going to go down, that the track was going to come to us quite a bit. So, and I, I was looking, I was really, uh, you know, confident going into the next day. Um, woke up the next morning and, and practiced a little bit more. And um, our mock run, you know, I was not happy with our mock run. And, you know, I think that, we will work a little bit on that. We had a different tire set from Wisconsin um, uh. that we try to mock on. I didn't like it. Um, it was obviously a different compound, so we'll make that mistake again. But qualifying came around, and I think we qualified third um, in the top seven or sorry, the top eight to a redraw, uh, and I pulled a seven. So uh, one of the worst numbers oh, I wow. pulled. I pulled, but um, you know, at the end of the day, 125 laps, enough laps to get it done. So. Uh, it didn't phase me too much. We started the race in seventh, and I was looking forward to it. Obviously, being fast in practice, being fast in qualifying, I uh, was happy with our long run speed too, to an extent. And uh, we drove up to the field really quickly. Um, obviously, Bubba Pollard won the race, and, and we passed him uh, pretty early on in the race. Obviously, it's early, but I um, was really happy with the speed we had on one of the restarts. Um, the 51, I guess, not Stephen Nassie, uh, Michael Atwell. Yeah. He got cleared by his spotter, and we were at his door. Uh -oh. And um, he put us in the fence and broke our right front lower control arm. Obviously, um, that ends our night right there. So uh, definitely something that wasn't really in our control. At that point, you can't you know, back out of it. you got to stay on your ground, um, and, and you can't always control what everybody else is going to do. But I think that as far as our 21 team goes, we were doing everything right and everything we could have done right we were doing right so uh, it's something that you can't you know let phase you too much you kind of have, have to let it be like water off the ducks back obviously you got to race the 51 a little bit different now but um at the same time i was really happy with how much speed we had we're normally really good up, up north and we struggle a little bit on the southern tracks with less grip so to be really fast there and be either the car to beat or probably the second best car to bubba that night um definitely a step in the right direction so nothing we could have done about it but like i said everything we can we can could have controlled we control so cutting the dells this weekend i'm looking forward to that uh dells is a place we've had a lot of success at uh, i think my last race i finished second there to solder so um we, i think we made our stuff a little bit better since then and obviously i think that um if i could redo that race last time that i wouldn't have lost it so uh, definitely some good confidence heading into this weekend and hopefully, uh, you know, we can make it happen and, and get our second super late one of the year. Okay, so with that, uh, those of you listening going, wow, this has kind of been a bit disappointing. Good runs, not the great results that we're used to. Hang on a minute. We got one more race to talk about. So uh, Jesse had the chance to uh, hop back on the dirt at a local track here in Mooresville called Millbridge Speedway, which really is of national prominence because they race on Wednesday nights. They run outlaw carts. Now they got micro sprints and, um, and they also run a flat cart series too there. But, um, uh, you know, a lot of the NASCAR folks are involved at Millbridge, either with their kids or somebody else's kids or whatever. So on Wednesday nights, it becomes kind of a popular hangout. Well, um, so Jesse, you got the chance to hop into um, a car last night at Millbridge. Talk about, first of all, how did this all come together? Because this wasn't something I don't believe um, that was necessarily planned going into the year that we've talked about anyway, uh, prior to this, but talk about, you know, what is it, who, who owns it? What is the situation and talk about, uh, your run last night. Cause you actually had a good run there. Yeah, we for sure did. Um, this is my second ever race on micro. Uh, we ran the week before in the, in the wing car and had a good night going, but we had a gear issue. So we didn't get to run any laps in the main. So, for all intents and purposes, this was actually like my first micro race. Um, and basically how it, how it shook, shook out was um, I got a call from some people at Toyota and, you know, they're asking if I want to go micro racing and um, that there's an opportunity to go do some of that with Chad um, on, on these Wednesday night shows. Who is now, Chad? You know, of course, Chad Bo. Okay. Yeah. So, um, of course, great opportunity and could open some, some doors 
to do some more dirt racing. So uh, I obviously didn't turn it down. And, and I think two days after, after that, I was obviously doing the seat fit for Chad and, and <laughs> you know, obviously thought that it would be a good idea. And, and we went micro racing. So uh, it was just a cool opportunity. And I think that um, that Toyota sees a importance in dirt racing. It's something that helps you stay sharp. And every time I feel like I get in a race car, I'll get better. So um, this was obviously a really cool opportunity and want to make the most of it and see what other doors it opens up. But yeah, like you said, we had a pretty good run. We uh, were there last night in the non-wing car and um, we went out really early in qualifying. I think it was like 35 cars. We went out really early in qualifying. It was still pretty greasy and uh, we qualified 10th. Uh, we started second in our heat race and won the heat race. Um, like a last lap pass actually. It was a pretty good battle. Nice. Me, a local guy, and Christopher Bell, and uh, who was the heat race? Who was the local uh, guy, Jesse? Um, do you know? I forgot. I don't forgot his name. I think Hunter Con or Cone. Oh, Hunter Cone. Okay, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and um, he was making the bottom work, and I was trying to run the top without leaving the middle open for Christopher to slide me. So it was a pretty good race. But um, Kyle, my teammate uh, Larson, won his heat race, and he did a great job um, at pulling a good pill and uh obviously pulled a zero invert and that put me and Kyle Larson on the front row um so it was a he was my teammate so it was a Chad Boat uh front row which is cool and happy to to do that for him and um we started second to Kyle I got a really good jump on the start and I was able to to pinch Kyle down the bottom and kind of break his momentum up a good bit and then I just started started making the top work because obviously it always makes its way up to the top there, especially on these night races. And yeah, I was able to get a pretty sizable lead. Um, I would say probably about 10, almost 15 car lengths. Um, Kyle was in second, and then we got a caution, which I was like, oh, because Kyle's obviously going to be really good on restarts. And uh, I still timed it pretty well. Um, and Kyle somehow was able to slide me. I, I felt like I had a good enough gap where he wasn't going to, but uh, he still slid me and, and made it work. And, um, I started racing with him for the next 10, 15 laps and it felt like we threw 20 sliders on each other. We probably did really <laughs> throw 20 slide jobs on each other. Wow. Um, had a really good race going and, um, obviously doing that slowed us up to Brent and Christopher and then, uh, Christopher got by me and, and that kind of killed my momentum to get up by Kyle. So then I just tried to race Christopher as hard as I could to, you know, make sure he didn't get to Kyle to make sure that one of our cars won the race. And um, I feel like I did a pretty good job with that and um, ran third for, for the rest of it. Race with Brent Cruz a good bit. He was obviously really good there. And he is. Um, and we kind of swapped positions a few different times. And I made a few mistakes at the end on the curb, and he was able to get by me at the end. But uh, we, ended up, we ended up finishing fourth. But uh, it was cool to lead, you know, a, hand, a pretty good amount of laps. And uh, to race against Kyle and Christopher, I definitely learned a lot. So uh, looking forward to the next time. And I think that there's some things that I picked up on. And working with Chad is really cool. I feel like he's done a lot to kind of develop me when I'm at the racetrack. Um, you know, not just prepare the car and make and give me a good car, but also help me be a better driver. So, um, you know, I was really... Learn, happy learning a lot with him, and you know, hopefully uh, we can you know do some midget racing or, or do something like that. That'd be pretty cool, and um, having a lot of fun over there. So it was cool being Kyle's teammate. I'm able to learn a lot from him uh, for you know the night that I was that I'm his teammate. So um, he was able to give me some good words of advice, and then to um, you know take the lead from him and race hard for a while. And um, I learned a lot. So there's some small things that I picked up on. Uh, just with how they run the top a little bit different than I was that I'll work on for next time. But all in all, good run, and, and it was cool. It was a good race, so everybody can go look at my uh, social media on Twitter and, and watch the highlights. It was definitely a fun race, and cool to see. I was surprised, actually, how packed out the stands were for Millbridge. So oh, it's cool. crazy there on Wednesdays. Yeah, that's uh, that's the that's the place to be at Wednesday nights. And, and again, for those listening, you know, here there's the evidence of what I said earlier. Because keep in mind that uh, if you're just in case you're 
wondering about okay Kyle Larson Chris Bell are they the same yes that two winning NASCAR cup racers right um and Jesse's out there running with them and also Brent Cruz who is one of the top racers to I think have ever put on a helmet at Millbridge he's young and just moved up into uh he's running some Trans Am races but he's also a very good dirt track racer um so again you know Kyle Busch is there with his kid running in the lower division on Wednesdays and Quinn Boyer's been there with his kid Kyle Larson's kid racer it's it really is a a, um a, a big uh deal on Wednesday nights at Millbridge and um so you know cool to to see you um, in the middle of that now, Jesse, and I know that you have a lot of fun on the dirt, so I'm happy to see that you got that opportunity. Are there going to be more opportunities for you to race there this year? You know, I sure hope so. Um, right now I have one more or two more races scheduled. It's like that 23rd and 24th event, um, which would be really cool to go run. Um, and, you know, hopefully we can get some more. I think that, um, Chad was talking to some guys at TRD to uh, see if, if they can put me in the car for a couple more. Good. Uh, especially, you know, some more wing stuff too. So, uh, and hopefully that opens, you know, some doors to run some midget races too. So sure. um, I feel like I've definitely progressed a lot over this, you know, two or three month stretch of doing a little bit of dirt racing again. And uh, especially for, for being out of the dirt car seat for oh, pretty much two years now. So um, definitely learning a lot. And, and, you know, I'd have to be out at Millbridge at least one more time. So, and hopefully that obviously brings more opportunities. You need to take more pictures with Larson. He makes you look tall. Yeah, he does. <laughs> uh, I, just, I just actually noticed that last night. I, uh, I've always said that uh, the only thing I haven't seen Kyle Larson win a race on is a horse, and he's about jockey size, so uh, may need to find a horse for him to ride in the Kentucky Derby next year. But, uh, yeah, fun stuff for sure to see you at Millbridge, and, and uh, it's it's just it's a cool, cool place to be. The, the track owners that uh, own that now bought that, and let me just say, Jesse, it was not anywhere near when they bought it what it is now. Now, they've really done a great job with it. So fun to see you in the middle of that and having some fun with those guys, because I know that's fun for you. Um, now, I also know that you can't do it all by yourself. So here's an opportunity to talk about who helped you make it happen. Yeah. First off, thank you, Crescent Tools, the good Lord above, everybody that tunes into this every week. Um, I appreciate you, Tom, and everybody at Race Face for, for producing this. Um, you know, monthly podcast for you guys to, to tune into and listen to. So, um, obviously, want to thank all my sponsors. We announced a new sponsor yesterday. I was uh, going to get to that. So that's um, definitely a great opportunity for us, and I can definitely look forward to building that relationship with you know such a world renowned and recognizable brand. So, we're really looking forward to sharing the car with you guys, and um, looking forward to doing some more racing this weekend with Mobile One on the hood of my. Uh, super late model as well as jbl audio uh, later this month are we going to get a purple fire suit out of this deal we'll see I, i'm looking forward <laughs> to, to sharing all that with you guys soon but um definitely a lot of purple is going to be happening uh when i do go race them on the yahoo car well uh look forward to that congratulations on that and i also the crescent tools cars man they are just sweet i love the the uh the wraps on those colors it's it's great um all right man well uh always a, a pleasure to talk to you and uh good luck the next few weeks we'll talk to you again in may that has been jesse love this has been another race face drive in five i'm tom baker thanks for listening you have been listening to race face drive in five 